The future is foreseeable until the unforeseen happens. After the COVID-19 pandemic, history has been fast-forwarded by 10 years and change arrived even before we could understand it. Just as happened back in October 1582, when, in order to adopt the Gregorian calendar, the Pope ordered that everyone skip 10 days in that month, making it the shortest month ever, just 21 days long. Even then, workers received their full month's wages, even though they didn't work for those 10 days. Just as happened in 2020, when they received financial support for the period that they were under enforced coronavirus lockdown. Civilizations have always tried to synchronize their time so as to feel more united. It was probably Augustus to start in the year 18 BC, ordering people to rest for the entire month of August after the harvest and before sowing the new season's crops. 400 years later, Emperor Theodosius made Sunday a compulsory day of rest, starting the weekly rhythm as we know it. Agriculture gave society the monthly rhythm. Religion gave it the daily one. The first thing Robinson Crusoe did after being shipwrecked on the island was to build a calendar so he would know when Sunday came around and continue to feel like he was still part of the community from which he had been separated. We then had to wait for the mass media of the 1900s to get into the rhythm of daily hours, with peak hours to go to work and prime time to watch the same films on TV. Then along came the social media that got us in sync in real time, with responses or likes within just a few seconds. We began to feel like citizens of the world, as we all simultaneously were a global community. In 2030, time is no longer what puts us in sync, but rather the reality of talking about the same issues via the social media. We created a society that processes thoughts in unison. Society has become asynchronous. Primetime television has already given way to watching movies on Netflix or Prime Video whenever it suited us. We preferred to communicate via WhatsApp messages rather than phone calls. After the big leap, we cultivate the foods we prefer in vertical vegetable gardens in a perennial springtime. Holidays are not necessarily in August. Even peak hour has ceased to exist. Remote working, which was being tried out by half of US workers and only 5% of workers in countries like Italy prior in 2020, has become the rule rather than the exception after the pandemic and has become a worker's right. All of the physical jobs done by the masses are automated and suddenly the work of storemen, cashiers, drivers and even production workers, if not yet replaced by robots, are done remotely. Children no longer go to school altogether, but are flipped classrooms in which theory lessons are done online at times that suit everyone. And the practical application of the theory learned is done in person in workshops. The concept of opening hours during which services can be accessed have disappeared. Cities and states become self-service and online. The new digital passport recognized by the UN enables any citizen of the world to identify him, herself remotely and access any services to which he, she is entitled whenever they like. In 2054, the last mass synchronization that we have dragged along with us as part of our civilization also falls away. With the cost of energy having dropped to zero, everyone decides when to sleep. Some opt for Tesla and Leonardo da Vinci's polyphasic method with a rest period every four hours, while others prefer to adopt Einstein's idea of 11 straight hours of sleep. The main issue is no longer focus on the schedule imposed by mass media and society, but on communal interests. Ideas will be a thing that sets the pace. Time will no longer be the main factor that governs our society. The economy itself has changed. After 2020, business models are all aimed at developing resilience. Whereas in the past, the symbol of success of a business used to be the unicorn due to its uniqueness. Now it's the camel due to its ability to overcome lengthy, difficult periods. Efficiency-based business models fail and the so-called sharing economy stops partly due to the people's rising mistrust about touching other people's things. It's replaced by the resilient economy, an economy based on a continuous time, on flows and not on individual transactions. Goods such as detergents and muesli arrive at home when they're needed and we don't have to remember to put them on our shopping list. Energy supplies in our homes are contracted on an ongoing basis by our virtual agents that choose the most convenient and sustainable supplier or barter any excess energy generated by the home for other services we need. Remote working is not compatible with traditional control-based hierarchical systems and companies begin reinventing themselves on the basis of holocratic organizational models with decentralized management responsibility. The multinationals, the leaders of the last century, are replaced by company federations based on resilience and links by technologies like blockchain, which acts as guarantor for all. A new kind of company emerges, known as a B Corp or Benefit Corporation. 
which is not focused on distributing profits to shareholders, but rather on providing value for stakeholders. GDP is thus abandoned to measure the economies of states, which does not come to celebrate the 100 years since its adoption in 1944. The new index is the value of the state, the value of the community for its citizens. Technology has speeded everything up. In just one year, everything has gone beyond the tipping point for change. Last century's Moore's Law, based on time, according to which the processing speed of electronic chips would double every 18 months, was surpassed in the 2000s by Wright's Law, according to which it's not time that matters, but rather economies of scale that drive down costs exponentially. Coronavirus has forced to reinvent proxemics, namely the management of personal and social space, city transport, and above all, has made it advantageous to live outside the metropolis with the consequent collapse of real estate values and the disappearance of the concept of urban periphery, with the revitalization of the value of small towns. Countries that have not had the courage to embrace change are called third-time countries. They have remained locked in the past, supporting the old-fashioned idea of work and have thus found themselves cut out of the new economy with unsustainable rates of unemployment that lead to social unrest and mass emigration. Their wealth distribution is no longer bell-shaped with few rich people and few poor people, but is instead elephant-shaped with many poor people, few rich people and no middle class. The US has had to reconstruct a social welfare state in which people do not have to choose between either having food to eat or getting medical treatment. China has had to give up on centralized government control of the economy in order to make it more equitable and sustainable. Countries that have prepared themselves by investing in technological resilience, like Estonia and South Korea, have instead managed to achieve the so-called Tiger's Leap and have found themselves leading the pack towards the new concept of evolution, thanks to their infra-regional rather than global supply chains with investments in sectors such as energy decarbonization and intelligent energy grids that have created millions of jobs around the world, and even introducing new digital citizenship rights, such as the right for everyone to have ultra-broadband connectivity and ability to decode their own DNA to prevent diseases in a targeted way. Every civilization has always counted time as from when it began, 1,278 years after the foundation of the city of Rome, a monk established a new starting point, the birth of Jesus Christ. That was 525 AD, and for the past 1,500 years, we have been using this system based on a religious event. In the same way, the Islamic community uses the moment when Muhammad left Mecca, whereas the Hebrew community uses the birth of the planet according to the Bible. In the future, time has a new beginning, the mental space of people is no longer occupied by the scanning of time, but by that of ideas that only an interconnected civilization can understand. Each time starts from the last idea that we haven't accomplished yet. Man is once again the master of his own time.